Okay, so let's review for the heart. Let me just zoom this in. Okay, so anatomy of the heart. Um, the heart sits in what cavity? Pericardial cavity, right? It's like a thoracic cavity, medius, dinum, pericardial cavity. So most specifically in the pericardial cavity, posterior to the sternum, um, more of the mass is to what side? The left of midline because the left side's bigger. Um, the top edge of the heart is called the base. The pointed free end is called the apex. Um, we've got a lot of kind of membranes surrounding the heart. The really tough outermost layer of the pericardium is called the, you could say pericardial sac, or even better would be fibrous pericardium. That really, really tough outer layer by itself, just that is the fibrous pericardium. Then that has a layer on side of it, inside of it as well, and that makes up the pericardial sac. So the delicate layer that lines just inside that fibrous pericardium is called the parietal pericardium. Parietal pericardium curves in, it forms a layer right on the outer surface of the heart, and that's called the visceral pericardium. What else do we call it? Epicardium. Epi means upon, so the epicardium is upon the heart. Um, if we slice the heart open, you see a thick layer of cardiac muscle called the myocardium. And then the membrane that lines the inner surfaces or the chambers is called the endocardium, within the heart, endocardium. The heart's got four chambers, two atria and two ventricles. The right and left atria are the chambers that are on the top. Um, they're smaller, but they are expandable. Okay, so they can hold the same volume. They have thinner walls, and what do we call them? What kind of chambers? Receiving, Receiving chambers, so they don't have to be super strong. They receive blood, it comes back to the heart in the atria. The right and left ventricles are on the bottom of the heart. Um, they are larger than the atria, and they have thicker, stronger walls. What kind of chambers are they? Pumping. Pumping. They contract forcefully to push blood out through the body. Um, cardiac muscle cells make up the myocardium. Myo means muscle. Cardi means heart. So cardiac muscle cells make up that myocardium. Cardiac muscle cells are different than skeletal muscle cells. Okay, they're very, very different. They're smaller. They're uninucleate. What does that mean? One nucleus, not many. Um, they're not uh, these long cylinders like in skeletal muscle. They're branched. They're shorter. They've got these branched ends where they interconnect with each other. At those ends, they have intercalated discs. It's got two different components. Uh, desmosomes secure the cells together, and then neighboring cells are connected to each other through little channels that are called gap junctions. Those gap junctions, remember, allow ions to go from one cell to the next so that you can propagate that action potential from cell to cell to cell to cell. We have um, two pairs of valves, so four valves present in the heart. Um, which valves prevent the backflow of blood from the ventricles back up to the atria? The atrioventricular valves. We've got one on the right and one on the left. The right AV valve is called the tricuspid. It has three cusps. The left AV valve is called the bicuspid. It has two cusps. What else do we call it? The mitral. Um, these valves, these AV valves, Okay, tricuspid, bicuspid have chordae tendinae and papillary muscles. The semilunars do not. Remember that these valves are the chordae tendinae and papillary muscles stabilize the free end of the valve so that it doesn't just swing backwards up into the atria. Um, the what valves? Semilunar Semi valves prevent the backflow of blood from large arteries back down into the ventricles. Pulmonary semilunar valves at the base of the pulmonary trunk prevents backflow into the right ventricle. The aortic semilunar valves at the base of the aorta, aorta prevents backflow of blood into the left ventricle. Understand the path that blood takes as it flows to the heart. Sorry if this made no sense. I didn't really know how to do it. Um, this was another one that I should have like just left handwritten. So talking about blood, how it flows into the heart, the valves it goes through, all of that. So we've got deoxygenated blood going from the superior vena cava, the inferior vena cava, and the coronary sinus into what? The right atrium. From the right atrium, 
this deoxygenated blood is gonna flow through the tricuspid valve and into the right ventricle. From the right ventricle, this deoxygenated blood is gonna flow through the pulmonary semilunar valve and up into the pulmonary trunk. The pulmonary trunk is gonna bring this still deoxy blood to the lungs. See, you got it. To the lungs to get oxygen. From the lungs, um, the pulmonary veins are gonna bring the now oxygenated blood into the left atrium. From the left atrium, the blood oxy blood is gonna flow through the bicuspid, or what else do we call it? The mitral into the what? The left ventricle is gonna pump the blood through the aortic semilunar valve into the aorta, which brings that oxy blood out to the body. Conduction system, remember that's like the electrical system. Um, that starts the electrical signals and, and um, distributes them through the heart. The heart displays automaticity or autorhythmicity. Um, this means that it can contract automatically without a neuron telling it to do so. Okay, it does that because of this conduction system. Uh, the SA node and AV node possess a prepotential or a pacemaker potential. Um, their resting membrane potential is or is not stable. Is not stable. Right? They do not have a stable resting membrane potential. It slowly changes. That's because they slowly depolarize to thresholds. They have leaking what kind of channels? Sodium. sodium channels. That allows sodium to leak into the cell. Okay? Positive charges are what depolarize it. Um, which node acts as the heart's pacemaker? The SA node. Um, why? There's so many ways you could say this. Yeah. Um, it depolarizes faster, right? It depolarizes at the fastest rate. Um, so it sets the pace that the heart beats. Okay, that's what that's what it means. So it depolarizes fastest, that's why. Um, what does this mean? That it sets the pace that the rest of the heart's gonna follow. And so it sets the heart rate. Um, the path of the electrical stimulus, so we just said it starts at the SA node. It goes through the internodal pathways, right? And through the atria down to the AV node. The AV node goes into the bundle, or AV bundle, then the bundle branches, and then the Purkinje fibers, right, which give the stimulus up to the ventricles. Um, the, we've already said this a million times, but the SA node starts the action potential that begins each heartbeat. Action potential spreads through what from the top to the bottom? Atria from the top to the bottom, and then it's delayed at the AV node to give the atria time to actually contract. As the action potential goes down the septum, the ventricles are not yet stimulated, right? We're waiting until we get that stimulus down to the very bottom. Um, the moderator band carries the signal oh, from the bundle branch over to the papillary muscles to secure the AV valve. Um, and then what chambers contract from the bottom to the top? The ventricles. Uh, a slow heart rate is called bradycardia. This is mm, kind of, depending on the patient, defined as a heart rate less than 60. A fast heart rate is tachycardia, heart rate over 100. Um, an electrocardiogram measures the electrical events in the heart. The what wave? P wave is a small wave that signals atrial depolarization. The QRS complex is a larger, more complex wave that signals ventricular depolarization. And what wave tells us that the ventricles are repolarizing? The T wave. So I got two minutes. Why can you live with AFib but not BFib? Really quickly, briefly. Yeah, the atria aren't pumping chambers, so if the atria quiver, doesn't matter. The blood's gonna drop down to the ventricles anyways. If the ventricles quiver, nothing pumps, right? The ventricles have to pump the blood out of the body, so if they're fibrillating, nothing's gonna work. So that was the electrical cells, the contractile cells. Uh, action potential begins when what kind of ions? What? Sodium ions from a neighboring cell um, bring the cell to its threshold voltage, 
The what phase occurs when the voltage-gated sodium channel is open? Rapid depolarization phase. Um, and sodium rapidly enters the cell, making it less negative. Um, the plateau phase occurs when sodium goes out while calcium is let in. What happens to the voltage during this time? It stays pretty stable, right? It plateaus because we got positives coming in and out. Um, and then what phase occurs when potassium goes out? Repolarization. Repolarization. We make it more negative, negative again. Contractile cells have a long, absolute refractory period. During this time, the cells cannot respond to stimulus, so they can't contract um, during this long period of time. This refractory period prevents summation and tetany from occurring in the muscle. Cardiac cycle. Systole is when the chamber does what? Contracts. What does this do to pressure? It increases it. Diastole is the phase when the chamber, what does that do to the pressure? Decreases it. Um, during atrial systole, the atria contract, pushing blood down through the AV valves and into the ventricles. During atrial diastole, the atria relax. In ventricular systole, the ventricles contract. We can separate this into early phase and late phase. Right? we got to pressurize it and then we actually eject. During early systole, the pressure closes the AV valves. Now all valves are closed. Um, this period when the ventricles contract to increase pressure but the volume is stable is called isovolumetric contraction. Good. In late phase, the pressure exceeds the pressure on the vessels, so we open the, the semilunar valves and blood's ejected. Um, in ventricular diastole, the ventricles relax. This is also early and late phase. In early phase, as the pressure decreases, what valves close? The semilunars. Now all the valves are closed again. What do we call it when the ventricle keeps relaxing but the volume doesn't change? Isovolumetric relaxation. Iso means the same. So isovolumetric means same volume. Volume's not changing. All the valves are closed. In the late phase of ventricular diastole, the, vent the pressure in the ventricles is lower than the pressure in the atria, so the AV valves open and blood flows down um, into the ventricles. The first heart sound, S1, is heard when what valves snap shut? The AV valves during ventricular systole. The second heart sound, S2, is hard heard when what valves close? Semilunars during ventricular diastole. Heart murmur is an abnormal heart sound. Um, the amount of blood in each ventricle at the end of diastole is the end diastolic volume. This is the maximum amount of blood that the ventricles will hold during that cycle. The amount of blood in each ventricle at the end of systole is the end systolic volume. This is the minimum amount that the ventricles will hold during a cycle. Um, what do we call the volume that we pump out in one beat? The stroke volume. Okay, understand that cardiac output is stroke volume times heart rate. Okay, be able to, um, oh sorry, stroke volume um, equals end diastolic volume minus end systolic volume. Okay, and um, cardiac output is the volume that's pumped by the left ventricle in one minute. Cardiac output equals stroke volume times heart rate and be able to use these. Okay, just like the example we did in class um, and then the scan page. Sorry, I'm like two minutes over. Um, you guys who have your practical tonight,